Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is not a flute tutorial, as you see, because I'm sitting here with a, a guitar. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, a track, a, well, a piece called Peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, on King Crimson's second album, In the Wake of Poseidon, which I discussed last time. Uh, apropos the, the flute part from Cadence and Cascade. Um, but I made a grave omission. I'm really sorry for that. Um, I didn't talk about this particular piece called Peace. Um, I just completely omitted it, omitted it and said there were five pieces and then suddenly thought, oh, crumbs, I've missed it. So this is a little talk about Peace in, specifically. Uh, Peace is a, an interesting um, addition to In the Wake of Poseidon because it starts the, the record, it partitions it, and ends it. And it's originally based on um, an, a, a now lost string quartet that Robert Fripp wrote. Um, and he used the theme from that and, and bits of the harmony from it. Um, I wrote a book several years ago called Musical Guide to In the Wake of Poseidon uh, and MacDonald and Giles. Um, uh, of course, Ian MacDonald and Michael Giles left King Crimson and released this album um, straight after In the Court of the Crimson King. There's Ian with his girlfriend. Um, so that's why this book is a musical guide to King Crimson's In the Wake of Poseidon and the MacDonald and Giles album, which came out um, both more or less simultaneously. I think In the Wake of Poseidon came first and then In the Wake uh, uh, MacDonald and Giles followed. Anyway, um, in this particular book, uh, I talk about peace um, and also you'll find a score of it on page 33 if you can find the book there it is there is one error in that well in fact two errors in that score which I'll discuss in a while anyway pieces are a triptych so it's in three sections uh, the beginning is based on A melody which is essentially a pentatonic scale A B C sharp E F sharp and A and you often find that in King Crimson's music uh, this uh, pentatonicism. Um, it's a, a recurring theme and it tends to it tends to rub up against the the more abrasive hard-edged pieces particularly in in the wake of Poseidon where you have this very soft vocal um, setting to begin with with Greg Lake singing um, which is quite um, moving um, quite plaintive um, and then you have Robert Fripp's solo guitar piece, Peace, a theme um, which sits in the middle at the beginning of side two. And then you have um, Peace and End at the beginning, and they're all related. So what I'm going to do is try and play Peace. It's quite difficult, but I'll do my best. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
That's the, that's the piece as it stands, piece a theme for solo guitar. Now I'm playing on classical guitar, Robert played it um, using picks, a pick and fingers. But um, I'm principally a, a, a classical guitar player, not really, I, I sort of play a hybrid of, of all kinds of guitar, but, but at the moment it's classical guitar. Um, I think that's a beautiful piece. Um, it's really worth having a look at and see, seeing if you can play it. I'll just go through it actually. Um, it begins with um, an A6 chord, uh, which it has an F sharp doubled, so it looks like that. So you have a bari in the second position. And then you have this little turn. onto E over G sharp. Now, interestingly, that little turn, of course, is from the theme. So Robert's adding, uh, it's like a theme and variation. He's, he's taken the actual theme of the piece uh, called Peace, a beginning, and put it at the beginning of the album. And then right at the beginning of the second, second side, then you have this variation just for solo guitar. Um, so you have this little turn and then the E over G sharp chord and then again a slide glissando from C sharp to E on the second string and then up to D major seventh on the fifth position and then back down to A and then uh, wait a minute, uh, D major 7th then, and then E over G sharp, and then this is quite ingenious. That is an E9 chord, but it doesn't use the, the root note, the E, it could do. But what Robert does is mute the E, so you have, you have the dominance, the 7th at the bottom of the chord, the D. And then you have um, this particular chord, um, which is a, a, a D chord, it's a D9 chord. The E, of course, is carried over from the, from the E9 chord, so it's a, it's a classic suspension. And then that resolves to D, making it a true D major chord. And then the little turn again. And then the D major seventh chord. And then the whole thing repeats. Exactly the same. A, D major seventh, E nine with the D at the bottom, D nine uh, resolving, D major seventh. Then we have an A chord, an A minor ninth really used in folk music. Then. A6 and then that's a G sharp minor seventh suspended over to C sharp seven and then A major seventh and then up to B minor seventh with a melody in the top two strings so you have a bari on the seventh fret a seventh position bari and then C sharp minor in ninth position bar A. So the, the, the genius of that is that the melody goes up to begin with on the B minor seventh chord and then and then comes down the other way on the C sharp uh, minor 
seventh chord and then back to D major seventh and then a suspension uh, that is an E7 chord but not having the B at the bottom it has a, a B on the root on the fifth string which then resolves so you've got the A to the G sharp on the third string A And then, so the B minor seventh and C sharp minor seventh, and then a D major seventh chord, but this time you have an A in the bass. So you've got a, a full chord, and then this lovely open, that's a B7 chord essentially, with, a, with an F sharp at the bottom. So you're going... 4-3 suspension and then of course it goes into cat food which is the which is one of the big tracks on side two and then I think I, I put a I just put an end on an E9 chord just to just to resolve it and to take it to E that is peace essentially it's a it's a it's a wonderful piece to play um difficult to play it's only a miniature um robert did tell me that he'd improvised it um which is an astonishing feat really i mean people talk about people talk about um you know these great guitar players like you know the people go on and endlessly about nick drake and i i agree and how wonderful his counterpoint was and so on but I think this is overrides everything. You know, you can you can look at loads of guitar players and many electric guitar players who actually don't succeed on on classical and folk guitars. And Robert can do all that. And the, the interesting thing is about peace is that it 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 juxtaposes classical styles with jazz I mean that is a piece is a real jazz piece I think but it also isn't quite jazz it has this classical side as well and the folk side too you know it's it's exactly what what King Crimson set out to be juxtapose all these different types of music uh, which of course was ultimately the defining aspect of, of progressive rock not only is is the technique incredible but there are also other things as well you know you in this in this piece because it's a soft piece it's very feminine and there are an awful lot of plagal cadences four to one four to one chords plagal cadences are often called are often known as feminine endings because they're they're less they're less noticeable less final than perfect cadences you know um so that's that's important um also the structure of pieces is incredible really i'm going to show you this at the at the top here this little you may be able to freeze the video and just have a look at this the positioning of the piece itself is interesting because of course you have the solo voice to begin with and if you listen carefully you'll hear the you'll hear the sonic field go from reverb to dry at the end where Greg Lake starts saturated in 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 reverb at a distance and then towards the end of that first little bit it goes complete his, his voice is brought into the foreground it's completely dry piece a theme has slight reverb not too much but it's again it's fairly close up to to a listener at the end right at the end of a devil's triangle going right seg moving segue from the devil's triangle into the final piece and end you have this sort of dry vocal really close up which then goes into reverb at the end and joins with guitar as well so the two aspects a solo voice at, at the in piece a beginning and piece a theme 
are brought together at the very end in 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 peace and end but you also have the reverb to dry of peace uh, a beginning compared to the dry to reverb at the end of peace and end which i've never known before that's the, i think i would say that that was a palindromic sonic field um which is quite in incredible um you know king crimson were working at that compositional uh, uh, compositional level um it, it's like no one else everyone else was rocking out or being very introspective sitting on stools and playing acoustic guitar which i love every all of it by the way but you know listening to bands like deep purple still thrill me you know and I, i'd love free and all those groups but as soon as i heard king crimson I thought, hang on a second, this is something else. So there we are. Um, I just wanted to put that right. Um, I also made a, ma a major, another major omission in, in, the, in the last video I made on Cadence and Cascade. I didn't mention Peter Giles. And Peter Giles, of course, was Michael Giles' brother, uh, the bass player, and played in Giles, Giles and Fripp. And he also played on In the Wake of Poseidon and um, MacDonald and Giles. And the great thing about Peter's playing is that it's very decisive, um, very accurate. Um, uh, so apologies for those omissions. And I hope this has somehow put those right. Um, anyway, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you'll be able to get something from that. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.